So I finally have an update on the Epic battery. So this is the new and improved version two. And a few months ago, I was testing and reviewing it. And while doing an over there update because I wasn't getting the full capacity, this battery became bricked. I was unable to use it. And that's very scary for an outdoorsy waterproof battery because let's say you're in an RV or a van and you're in the middle of nowhere and then your battery just stops working after you do an update. Especially if this is your only battery and you depend on it. That would be horrible. And unfortunately, this happened to a lot of people. They had to send out these tablets to fix the problem. And this tablet is connected to a USB to CAN bus, and then it connects to the wiring harness, and then you flash the BMS firmware, and then the battery fires right back up, and it's actually working now. So the one that I bricked is now working. Now, unfortunately, that wasn't the only issue. I wasn't pulling full capacity, and the app was very buggy, but now they've fixed everything. So for example, this is the same battery as the bricked battery and I couldn't pull over 100 amp hours unless I went over a 24 hour rate and then I would get 102, just like their 12 volt battery. All of them were acting the same, but now with the new firmware, then I got 101, 101, 103 at a 24 hour rate, but I wasn't getting 105. And I was like, what's going on? Is it really being controlled by the voltage for the, the cutoff thresholds or is it state of charge? So I tried doing a test at a higher rate. And on the app, it said 99.9 .9 amp hours available. And then I did a 1C rate and then I got 99.9 .9 amp hours in my test with the shunt. So if you do a really slow test, you can get above 101 amp hours, but anything less than that, it's gonna cut it off at exactly 100 amp hours or 99.9. .9. Please ignore my horrible handwriting, that looks so bad. Now the app is stable, but I don't like it. For example, it shows zero amps, but guess what? It still shows that it's charging. This little graphic needs to be changed. Next, it says CUV under voltage, but none of the cells are under voltage. We're at 52.3 volts. So this is a new issue. I've never seen it do this before. And this is version 2.7. This is the latest firmware, but it's actually stable. When I did my testing, I had no issues. And the over the air update, if you've already updated the firmware, it won't let you do anything weird. It actually works before it was really buggy. So now that part is stable. I wish I could click on these errors. That would be nice. It doesn't really let me do anything here. Let's connect to the other battery and see what's going on. I've been messing with this for the last few days and I'm about to lose my mind. I hate messing with software that's bad. All right, this one looks good. I don't have any warning. I've never seen that warning before. I was just charging it. It was working just fine. So I'm not sure what that means. Usually CUV means cell under voltage, but if I click on it, maybe it's just a warning, but that's weird to have a warning at 22% state of charge. I don't know, we'll figure it out later. Anyways, it does work now. It won't break your battery, but it needs to be refined, like the graphics and how you use it. And the over the air update does work, but it locked up right after I did it. It showed 100% and then I couldn't do anything. So I shut down the app, I fired it back up, it connected, it worked, but they need to fix that. Now for the problem that I found. So this one and the two others can pull full capacity with the new firmware. And the 24 volt one, worked just fine on the first capacity test. And the 12 volt one worked just fine on the first capacity test, but it was a very slow rate. But with this one, so not only is this the bricked one, but when I first got it, it did 96 and 97 amp hours. And with the new firmware, we got 95.5 amp hours and it showed 99.9 .9 amp hours. And then I watched the test during and it showed it like 8% that there was 8% more to go. And then it just shut down and then it showed 0%. So this one is just not working as well as it should, unfortunately, but it's not bricked anymore. So we fixed that. And the app is stable for over the air updates, which is is good but why are we getting 95 96 97 like this is with the new firmware like what is going on here something to mention is these are not using the same cells as the 12 and 24 volt version these are rept cells and they said that a lot of them they have to balance about six cycles for them to pull full capacity with them. So that's what I did over here. I cycled the heck out of this thing. But this one just doesn't wanna pull full capacity. And if you do have to balance your cells on a brand new battery, that means you have lower quality cells or the quality is there, but they're not batched and charged correctly.
directly at the factory. And I wonder how I got this warning. How did I find a new problem while making this video? Why am I getting a warning at 22% state of charge for under voltage? Anyways, I'll give them a few months, see if they can fix out, iron out all these issues. It seems stable for now, but yeah, I still have one with an issue. It's not pulling full capacity. I have been testing super cheap batteries lately, like 12 volt batteries, 48 volt server rack batteries, and they pull ridiculous numbers on the first few cycles. If you have to balance your battery, it's probably a lower quality or not properly made at the factory. And when they fix the firmware, they also fix the Victron communication issues, but they spent the last few months working on specifically that. I'm not gonna test that until they get it 100% down because I can't be a beta tester. I'm trying to make other videos. It's This is wasting a ton of time for me. And I'm stressed, I'm tired. I stay up late doing these tests, it's driving me nuts. And then they have a million excuses. Oh, it's this, oh, it's that. It needs to work on the first cycle, that's it. So hopefully in the next few months, they'll figure it out, make it better, fix the app also. It needs to be solid. Like I think they need to look at it themselves and say, hey, does this look good? Should it be doing this? So hopefully they come around. I love the hardware. These are Roy Pals inside. I love the hardware, fantastic. And yeah, this one, I don't, I don't even know why it's doing this. So I'll figure that out maybe in a couple months. I'll wait till the next firmware update. I don't know. I think this one just has a weak cell or something, but it doesn't show that it does. All the cells have the same voltage. So I don't, I don't know. This one, maybe the BMS, I don't know, who knows. But this stuff takes time. Pretty much every company I know has made this mistake with the software. They depend on China, they think, oh, it looks good. The last version worked so well. But you should never trust anything. You need to test everything before it goes out especially for batteries. And you know what? Why do we need firmware over the air updates for a battery? There's nothing on this that I need to update at all. There's nothing that's gonna change in the chemistry on these cells. And I understand the closed loop communication makes it difficult because that's something you might wanna update, but I think that should be a separate thing, like a little module that you can update separately, not the battery itself. I just don't like that. I think the battery has to have its own communication system that doesn't need to be updated. And then you can connect a module that can allow you to interact with closed loop communication protocols. Have it separate because having a battery become bricked from an over the air update, I, I don't like that. That's not cool. Let's see if they responded. They're saying this one might just have an issue because it's just so strange. Yeah, there's no low voltage cell, but I'm getting that warning. So I think this one just has issues, I don't know. But we did successfully bring it back to life and it has the latest firmware. So that's cool, we did it. Now flashing the firmware was easy. I did not use the instructions and I figured it out. So I'm pretty sure you guys can. But when you're loading the file for flashing the firmware, if you have a 48 volt battery that's bricked, make sure it's the 48 volt file and then load it and then it will just start working and everything will be great. I don't think you guys can screw that part up as long as you select the right bin file. Now whenever a company comes out with a version two or a new anything, give it a couple months whether it's an electric vehicle, a solar charge controller, an inverter, batteries, whatever. Like the new stuff always has issues. Now I use Samsung phones and a few months ago I got the new S25 Ultra and you would think that Samsung would check their firmware. Well, guess what? My Bluetooth wasn't working on that phone. I returned it and then I got my old phone. Can you believe that? This is 2025 from Samsung and they still can't get their firmware right. So this is a common issue. And it had a bunch of other bugs. I could whine and complain all day long. Anyways, these are not bricked anymore, but be wary of new products. And I would not buy these until they figure everything out. Right now it's stable, but give it another three months or so. I just wanna see if they can fix everything. And this battery might just be a bad battery. That's always a possibility. But it's less of a possibility of having issues if you wait like six months on a new product. So anyways, I'm gonna keep rambling. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.